Okay, this is an update to my last do-it-yourself stir plate that I made. I wanted to make some improvements. I was hoping to make a more powerful stir plate, one that would actually stir a carboy. And I'm not sure if I've quite made it yet. Uh, I haven't tried to stir a carboy. I just finished putting this together, but I thought I'd show it to you. Uh, this is a 2,000 milliliter flask with a one inch, uh, actually it's about a one and a half inch stir bar in it. <clears throat> and I got a more powerful fan, a fan that requires more amperage. Uh, one of the things that you need to do when you're deciding which fan and power supply to pair together is you have to make sure that the 12 volt power supply uh, can deliver enough amperage. Uh, so for example in my my first uh, rendition of the stir plate the fan said that it required uh, 0.14 amp amperage which is 140 milliamps and the power supply that I was using had printed on the back that it could deliver a maximum of 12 volt 300 milliamps and so I was safe with that the little tiny fan that I would used but the fan that I've chosen this time requires 350 milliamps and so I had to pick up a new power supply which I got on Amazon.com for I don't know like seven bucks but it said that it could deliver 1,000 milliamps or, or one amp. So <clears throat> I'm good to go with the, uh, the power requirements for this fan and I've actually increased uh, the magnets, the rare earth magnets. I've gotten more powerful rare earth magnets. So I'll turn it on just to let you see what it looks like. This is, I've added also a 25 ohm potentiometer. I spoke with a friend of mine uh, who knows how to calculate the type of potentiometer that you need uh, depending on the fan requirements and he said that for the fan that I have I probably need one uh, that is about a 38 ohm potentiometer. The only thing that Radio Shack sells is a 25 ohm. Uh, don't get confused with the one that say uh, 50k ohm, that's not uh, the same thing. You want 50 ohm. Uh, actually, he said 38, and the closest to that is a 50, and they don't sell a 50 ohm. So I'm going to order a 50 ohm, I think, uh, in the next rendition to see if I can get this to work even better. Uh, but the 25 ohm, you can see here, I don't have much resolution on the potentiometer. If I turn it up just even a little bit, it'll get going too fast. The vortex goes down and as the vortex and the air bubbles hit that uh, stir stick, uh, when too many of them start hitting it, it causes the stir stick to move. And if the stir stick moves too much, it flies off the magnet. And so here I'm turning it up. I've turned it up from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And you can see that the vortex is hitting it more often. <clears throat> I turned it up even a little bit more. Now it's hitting it more often. There it goes. Knocked it off. So I think I can resolve that by getting a more powerful uh, earth magnet. I don't think I necessarily need a more powerful fan. I think the fan speed is, is fine. Um, I ordered this fan off of Amazon for $7.79. Uh, I ordered um, a more powerful earth magnet that I'm going to test out. And I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up the 50 ohm potentiometer to fix this. I'll show you what it looks inside, like inside. Uh, that's the potentiometer. fan mounted on a 2x6. The way you wire the potentiometer is when you come in from the power supply, <coughs> you've got a hot wire and a ground wire, red and a black wire. And you have to hook the ground to ground up, the ground wire to the ground wire on the fan. And on the potentiometer, you take the hot wire, the red wire, and go to the middle hook the 
hot wire to the middle of the three legs that stick off the potentiometer and then you take uh, the rightmost leg on the potentiometer and come back to the power supply or to the fan connection so you've got uh, the hot one of the hot wires coming off the power supply going to the potentiometer the other hot wire coming back from the potentiometer connecting to the hot connection on the fan and that's pretty simple um, I've, I soldered it to the potentiometer because um, that seemed to be the easiest thing to do you could probably also uh, take your wire and wrap it around it and tape it on there uh, if you don't like to solder I also I didn't solder the rest of the wires but uh, I did solder those I'll show you the uh, magnets that I used I picked these magnets up at uh, the surplus store here in town called Axeman. Uh, I think these are a little more powerful than the rare earth magnets I took out of the hard drive last time. I think I paid three dollars for those two magnets. So they're not very expensive. The fan was uh, seven dollars and seventy nine cents. I super glued a washer on top of the fan. I did not super glue the magnets. Those magnets will come off so that I can try a different size magnet if I want. And that's what I plan to do. Uh, so there it is. This, this will work fine for spinning a 2,000 milliliter flask. My last rendition with the uh, 1.4 amp fan would not spin a 2,000 milliliter flask very easily. This one does. It seems to be a combination of uh, better resolution on my potentiometer. I don't necessarily think that a more powerful fan is what I needed, but I needed a potentiometer with higher resolution, which I got now with a 25 ohm potentiometer. And the stronger earth magnets, the combination of the two, allowed me to stir the 25 or the 2000 milliliter flask. So there's an update on the do it yourself yeast stir plate.